Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, we will be looking at virtual private cloud, VPC network, um, subnets and firewalls, okay? So how we can create VPC network subnets and attach firewall rules to it and so on. So before we start about, uh, before we start our hands-on, um, I just wanna go through quickly with you the difference between the, uh, the VPC subnets between Google Cloud and AWS. All right, so in GCP, the main thing to note is the uh, VPCs are global, unlike in AWS, where VPCs are regional. So you can create a VPC inside a region. It can't span across a region in AWS. But whereas in Google Cloud, the VPC that you create is global, so you can use it in any of the regions. And the subnets you create are regional, which means uh, the subnets you can create can span across all the zones across multiple availability zones in a specific region. And similarly here, you've got this subnet that spans across three different zones. But whereas in AWS, you can create a subnet only within an availability zone. So I've got the diagram for AWS as well. So in AWS, the VPCs are confined to a specific region, right? So this VPC, this network, can't span across multiple regions, which means if you had created a virtual, uh, I mean, if you have created an EC2 instance, for example, in this subnet, in this availability zone, in this region, and if you've got another virtual machine in this availability zone, in this VPC and in this region, in order for these EC2 instances to be able to communicate with each other, you need to set up VPC peering between these two regions, all right? So that's how it is in AWS. VPCs are region, are regional and uh, subnets can't span across multiple availability zone so th they are confined to a single availability zone so in gcp vpcs are global subnets are regional and uh, so now if you create a, an ec2 instance sorry not ec2 if you just create a virtual machine in this subnet and if you create another uh, virtual machine in this subnet they can talk to each other without any vpc peering or anything because they are sharing the same VPC, which are global. Okay, so that's the thing that I want you to think about uh, when it comes to the difference between Google Cloud and AWS for VPCs and subnets. Okay, so now let's head on to the Google Cloud console and create our first VPC. All right, so I've logged into my Just Me an Open Source um, Google Cloud account and I've selected the Just Me testing project. So make sure you're in the right project and you can go to on the left sidebar here scroll down to vpc network and click on vpc networks or the easiest way is i can go ahead and search here vpc network okay so that's our vpc network and by default uh in your google cloud account you will have a default vpc so we've got the default vpc which has a default subnet in each of the region so we have these different regions for example 23 regions and we have a default subnet created on all of these regions all right and we've also got firewall rules attached to this uh, default vpc so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start everything from scratch i'm just going to delete this vpc default vpc and uh, let's delete this vpc network yes delete deleting the network Okay, and you can see the progress here. Delete network default. All right, so that VPC, the default VPC network is now gone. And if you look in here, delete network default is gone. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our new VPC. If I go to firewall rules, um, okay, so there's no firewall rules. So when you delete your vpc network it also deletes all the attached firewall rules that's what i wanted to show you okay so going back to vpc networks create a vpc network let's give it a name vpc-1 give it a description my first vpc subnets okay so when it comes to creating your subnets there are a couple of options you've got so either you can go with automatic or custom creation mode how do you want to create your subnet so the difference is if you go with automatic, it's going to define a subnet in each of the region and uh, you won't have control about the IP address range. It's going to automatically choose an IP address range 
for each of the subnets in all these availability zones. So it's easy to get started. You just need to give it a name and description. Otherwise description is also optional. You just need to create a name, that's it. And then if you just click create, it's going to create all the subnets for you. But why do you want to create a custom subnet? Say for example, you've got your infrastructure uh, on-prem as well, okay? And if you, in, if you want to interact, you want to have a hybrid environment where uh, some of your resources are on-prem and some of your resources are in cloud. You don't want the networks to be, um, uh, to be in conflict. Uh, so if the uh, IP address range, if the IP range given here is already in use in your on-prem network, then uh, there is very little point in setting up the peering connections and so on. So you'll have problems later. So if you want to take full control, I wouldn't go for automatic. Instead, I would go for custom and I can define my own subnet. And I can also specify in which region I want that particular subnet. I don't want the subnet to be created on all the regions, okay? So first I'm going to give it a name. The name that you give is going to be a unique name. So you can't use the same name again in a different, uh, even in a different VPC. So this subnet that you are creating, the name you're giving here, you can't use the same name even if you are creating it on a different VPC, okay? So let's give it a name. I've always, I used to always prefix that with the uh, the VPC network name. So VPC one, and I'm gonna say Europe West two, and this is my first subnet, so dash one. And I'm going to create this subnet in Europe West two. Okay, so IP address range 10.0.1.0 slash 24, Okay, done. And if you want, you can also create additional subnets, but I'm not going to create additional subnets here. You can always create subnets uh, at a later point. Okay, so click create and that's it. So we will wait for it. It might take a few minutes, couple of minutes to get the uh, VPC um, routes and the subnets gets created. All right, so it took less than a minute and we've got our uh, new VPC network created with one uh, subnet, okay. So now uh, what we can do is we can add additional uh, subnets to it. So I can go to VPC one and I can add a subnet here, add a subnet. So here now I'm gonna say VPC dash one. This is the name of the subnet that you are creating and Europe West two. And this is my second subnet. So you can give whatever name you want. Region EU West two, we can also create it in a different region because VPCs are global. Uh, subnets are region specific, so you need to choose which region you want the subnet to be created. So Europe West 2, and this time I'm gonna choose 10.0.2.0 slash 24, add. Okay, so now the second network is getting added. And if I look in here, creating subnet. Okay, so go back to VPC network, refresh, yeah, there we go. So we've got our second network. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a firewall rule. So if I go to firewall rules, we don't have any firewall rules. So now if you create a virtual machine in any of these subnets, and you won't be able to access that machine because we haven't created any firewall rules. So let's create a firewall rule so that incoming SSH connections are allowed. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a name. So let's call it VPC one firewall allow ssh description allow ssh connections to my vpc dash one okay so network we only have one vpc network so i'm selecting that the type of traffic is ingress incoming connections action i'm going to allow and specify target so what do you want to specify does this apply to specific targets? So when you're creating firewall rules, what you can do is uh, in the target field, you can specify the tag of the virtual machine so that it only applies to the virtual machines which has this tag associated with it. So if I specify some tag, uh, for example, web, sorry, web. So this firewall rule will get applied only to those virtual machines that has the tag web attached to it. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to choose all instances in the network. So this firewall rule applies to all the instances in that network. Source filter, IP range, and I'm going to say 
0.0.0.0 slash 0. So the source IP range is uh, everything. If you want, you can add a second source protocol. Do I want to allow everything from everywhere? No. So specified protocol, I'm going to choose TCP and say 22. I'm just trying to allow incoming SSH connections to my EC2 instances. Okay, so create. So that's our first firewall rule getting created. And if I look in here, create firewall rule that's getting created. And that's attached to the network VPC one. So if we go back to VPC network, and now you can see firewall rule is zero. And if I refresh, firewall rule is one. So now we've got a structure. We've created a VPC. We've created a couple of subnets in those uh, in that VPC. We've created firewall rule. I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. But in my next video, uh, we will go through this again. But instead of uh, doing this via the Google Cloud Console, we will do it via the command line using the G Cloud CLI tool. So we will be creating another VPC and um, subnets, deleting subnets, deleting VPC. Um, adding firewall rules, everything, whatever we did in this video, we will be doing again using the G Cloud CLI. So stay tuned. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.